Hey guys, quick tip for you today on Rails. Uh, I was trying to use translations in an API controller uh, the other day, and if we do that, and we use the built-in you know, default hello translation, if we open this up in our browser, uh, we're gonna get an error that it says undefined method T, so the translation helper is not there in API controllers, even though it is in regular controllers that inherit from action controller base. So it got me wondering, how does this work in Rails and how do I add that functionality? Well, if we go to the Rails source code, we can go into action pack and go to lib, we can go to action controller, and in here you'll see there's an API file and a base.rb, and if we open both of those up, we can look at the source code for those controllers that we're inheriting from. So the API controller is mostly documentation, um, and if we come down here, this is where the class is defined, and we can see a list of modules, and this is where the actual work of, or the you know functionality is defined. So here we have abstract controller rendering, URL for redirecting, the typical features. But if we were to compare this to the action controller base, and we look at this one, what we'll see in the modules list, when we get past all the documentation, is we get abstract controller rendering, but we have translation. That catches my eye. Um, and then we have asset paths, helpers, URL for a bunch of other things in here, like cookies and flash and stuff that is not going to be used in um, API controllers. So this one seems to be the most relevant for us. And we can try it out by just including that module inside of our controller and see what happens. So we can go over to our Rails app, refresh, and our translations are now working in API controllers. So if you ever need functionality like this, you can include those modules into your API controllers. But more importantly, I wanted to show you this process of how I debug things. When something goes wrong, I think about how did Rails do this internally? So if I can understand how Rails did that, then I can figure out a good solution to do that and one that is not likely to break in the future. Rails is not likely to rename this module if they do, we can just change the module that we include, but it's unlikely that's going to be changing in the future. So this is a pretty good solution for us. We can build our own API base controller if we would like to inherit that and then have all of our API controllers um, include translation support. Uh, but that's just a good example of what you can do to debug a problem like this in your Rails apps. And it gives you a lot of knowledge now about how Rails works internally, even if it's something as simple as what modules are included in these classes.